Today, using Apple Motion, I'm going to show you how to recreate the Peter McKinnon animated letterbox effect as a template that you can use over and over in Final Cut Pro with additional speed controls. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project file and use it in your videos right now. Opening up Apple Motion, if you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're going to select the Final Cut title, and I'm going to recommend you set your duration to something like 10 seconds. After that, I'll go ahead and push Open. First, we'll want to delete this type text here layer. Then, we're going to go over to our library and locate our generators. In here, we should find this color solid. Go ahead and drag that color solid over into your layers panel. Then selecting group one, go ahead and push command left bracket to drop it down in the layer stack. After that, we'll select our title background and go into our inspector, then go over to our properties. Down here at the bottom, you'll see there's this crop option. Go ahead and enable that cropping feature, then right click on the cropping, then select add parameter behavior and link. From there, we can drag this color solid into the source object well. The reason we do this is this allows us to animate the letterbox later on in a very easy method. Now that we have that link parameter, go ahead and select the group that contains your title background. Go up to your filters, go down to border, then select widescreen. Over here on the left side, you can see we can set our aspect ratio. By default, it's set to 1.66 by one. Let's go ahead and change that over to something like 185 to one. We'll go up to add object and select rig. From here, we can go ahead and select the pop-up option and we can rename this first option to be 185 by one. We can also rename this pop up by double clicking on it and calling it aspect ratio. Go ahead and click on the start for your edit mode. We can move this window out of the way. Then we can go down to our color solid and locate the cropping options. Go ahead and click on show and enable cropping. From there, we'll find the bottom and the top options in our cropping and just go ahead and click and drag those until the blue is completely gone from the background. Once you've got that set, go ahead and click on stop rig edit mode. Then we can jump into our widescreen option and change this over to 235 by one. We can jump back into our aspect ratio rig and change the aspect ratio over to snapshot two. From there, we'll just rename this to be 235 by one. Then we can drag and adjust the bottom and top layers here directly inside of the rig. I'll go ahead and just set these both to 130. Now that I've done that, we can jump to the next aspect ratio, which will be 255 by one. We can go into our widescreen options and change this over to be 255 by one. Going back to our aspect ratio rig, we can just drag the top and the bottom until the background is completely gone which should be somewhere around 165. Finally, we could add in one more snapshot and rename that to be 300 by one. And we'll go to our widescreen options and change this over to 300 by one. Going back to the aspect ratio, we can go ahead and drag these up until that black is completely gone, which should be at the 220 mark. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and completely disable the widescreen options. We can also disable the color solid that we added. This is where the animation takes place. Go ahead and select the link parameter that we added in earlier. Taking a look at the link parameter, you'll see there's this mix over time feature. Right now it is set to custom mix and we could actually just click and drag the slider to animate that mix. But there's a really powerful feature where it can auto animate for us. We'll change the custom mix over to ease in, ease out. And now we have this mix time range. Currently it is set to 10, which is 10 frames. So 30 frames would be a full second. I'll go ahead and set that to 30 frames for right now. If I push play, you'll see now that the bars are animating in and at the end of our project, they animate out. Now we want the speed to stay consistent inside of Final Cut Pro. So we need to go one second into our project and push Shift M. This is going to add this marker. Go ahead and right click on that marker and select edit marker. From there, we'll change the type from standard over to build in optional. This is going to give your users the option of animating in the letterbox, or we also want them to have the option of animating it out. So we'll go to the very last second. We'll push shift M to add a marker, right click on it, select edit marker and change it to build out optional. With this link parameter selected, we want to give our users the ability to change the speed. Go ahead and click on this down arrow next to mix time range. We'll go down to add to rig, rig, and then we'll create a whole new slider rig. From there, we'll change the range maximum all the way to just one. 
which indicates one second. Now, since our slider is all the way to the far left hand side, it should be set to zero. So we'll drag that down. But if we drag the slider to the right hand side, you'll notice it sets it to 30 frames, which again indicates one second. So now our users will have the ability to change it from zero seconds to one second. Now that we've set that up, we can rename this slider to be speed and we can go ahead and click on this down arrow and then select publish. Selecting the next rig down, the aspect ratio, we can go ahead and publish that as well. So if we jump over to our project, look at the project options in here, we should see that we have a speed slider and an aspect ratio slider. If we go ahead and set this down to 0.5, we can push play and now the animation takes place over half a second. We could even offer the extra options of what kind of easing the user could want. So we could go back to the link parameter and find this ease in, ease out option click on the down arrow and then select publish. So now if the user wants to, they could go in and select accelerate decelerate and now it will accelerate in and it will decelerate out. Finally, if we wanna add the option of somebody being able to change the colors of these black bars appearing, we can go on over into our library, into our generators and locate another color solid. Go ahead and drag it into that original color solid group. Then we'll go into the inspector and locate the color. We'll go ahead and click on this down arrow and publish that, but we also want to have the option of if this background is even there. For example, maybe they want that to be an alpha channel. So to achieve that, we'll go on over into our properties, locate the opacity and publish that as well. Going into our project, we can select our project settings and set this over to white. Then we could set the opacity down to zero. So now our users can see that the background is indeed being added. We could also even rename this to just be background opacity. And if I wanted to, I could click and drag to reorder that. From here, I'll just push command S, which will save it. And we could just call this animated letterbox. Then in our categories, we can throw it into whatever we like. I will throw it into my tutorials category. From there, we'll push publish. And now that I'm in Final Cut Pro, I can go into my titles, go into the category that I saved it to and locate animated letterbox. I'll just drag that down onto the timeline. And if we push play, you'll see that we now have this beautiful animated letterbox. We can adjust how long it takes for that animation to take place. We could change what aspect ratio it is. And we could even adjust the background color to whatever we like. So that is how to recreate the Peter McKinnon letterbox effect for use in Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I go in depth on recreating a Mr. Beast animation from one of his most recent videos. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.